Hello, I am Javier Bardem, and this is the Wired Autocomplete interview. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm good to go. I'm good to go. It's okay. <laughs> oh, wow. All of those. Where did Javier Bardem grow up? I grew up in Madrid. I grew. I was born in Canary Island, in Las Palmas. My parents moved to Madrid, and I consider myself Madrileño from Madrid. Yeah. And I love Madrid. It's a great city. How did Javier Bardem learn English? I learned English by listening music, by listening to ACDC and uh, trying to understand what they were saying. And of course, I learned how to curse in English and I learned the bad words and I still love those words lyrics. I guess now it's easier to act in English than it was, let's say, let's say 15 years ago. But still, it's always it's always demanding and it's always hard to let yourself go. I still have to work a lot in order to feel comfortable with the lines. When I work in Spanish, I can't let myself go. At the same time, in a way, I'm less shy in English than in Spanish because I have less attachment to it. So I can jump off a cliff with the English because I don't have memories in English. It's not like when you speak your own language or your mother tongue, where everything is related to an emotion. Why does Javier Bardem not drive? I don't know, because I've, I've always lived in the, in the city and I've always used the buses and the underground. Mostly I walk, I like walking. But still, I can drive in movies. If they give me that car with two weeks in advance, I can learn how to drive in a movie without killing anybody. <laughs> Javier Bardem, how to pronounce? Ah, Javier Bardem. Javier Bardem. You can pronounce whatever the hell you want it. I mean, it's okay. They call me everything you can imagine. Javier Bardem, Javier Bardem. Some people call me Caviar Bardem. What about that? Bye-bye. Okay. What does Javier Bardem do? Do what? Do where? Do when? I'm an actor. That's all. the only thing I can do. And I almost not know how to do it. <laughs> what was Javier Bardem's first movie? Wow, very first movie. I was six years old and it was called El Picaro. And I was playing someone that I was uh, stolen. And the kid who was going to play the role didn't go to the set for whatever reason. And my mom said, I'll bring my kid. And then I was there. And I was supposed to laugh, but I cried. And the director said, okay, he's a dramatic actor. It's okay. Javier Bardem, Jamón, Jamón. I would say that's the first movie that I did where I had a very important role to play. I was 21, and it's the first movie that my actual wife did, Penelope. She was 16, and that's when we met. And it was a very important movie for many reasons, because of the movie and what the movie meant for both of us and how it helped our careers, and also because we met. And the director, Vigas Luna, is my mentor. It's, uh, it's a person that I will always adore and worship for the chance that he gave us. And uh, I always call him Papa Vigas. And uh, God bless him. I love him. How about them? Best movies? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it depends on, on so many things. Some people may like one and may hate the other. It's hard to make a good movie. Doom Part 2, I have to say, and yes, I'm promoting it, but it's not because I'm promoting it. Doom Part 2 is a great movie, and it happens that I'm in it, but it's a, it's a fantastic piece of work of so many people, but especially by Denis Villeneuve. Throw the board. Okay. Is Javier Bardem... Jesus, say my name out loud, it's crazy. A nice guy? I can be a nice guy, and I can be an asshole, absolutely. I can be a tough one, and I can be loving. I can be many things. I'm a human being. I try to do my best. The ultimate uh, goal is to teach my children how to be good people. And for that, you have to really show them the example of it. So I try. Does Javier Bardem play piano? No, look at my fingers. No, 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 no. I play drums. I like playing drums. I like the beats. I, li I like the congas and the bongos. I'm not a good drummer, but I like playing drums. Javier Bardem, collateral. Yeah, that was my first big movie. My scene was with Jamie Foxx sitting down on the table. I have to make this little speech. And it was very intimidating to be in such a big set with such a big star and also directed by Michael Mann. But Michael Mann made it a beautiful experience, I have to say, because he was so much focused on every detail of the performance that made me feel like, wow, I'm in such a great hands. He loves acting, he loves performances, and he really takes the time to make sure that the actor is giving what he needs, but also what the actor needs to express. So it was a great experience. And I love the movie. How about them? Education. I studied in Spain. I didn't go to university. I went to Artes y Oficios, which is like Bell Arts, where I was painting and doing sculptures and doing drawing which I like very much. I mean, I kind of move away from it. And if you don't practice daily, you lose it. But I love it. Javier Bardem, 
won an Oscar. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I did. <laughs> I was there. I saw it with my own eyes. It was a great moment. I loved it, of course, and it was a great honor. But I liked the most that my mother was there for me to be able to say thank you. And the reason why I was there that night on that stage it was because of her and her parents, who both were actors my grandparents. And because of their sacrifice, I was able to be there on that stage. Does Javier Bardem sing and dance? Yes! Lila and Crocodile. It's a great movie where I had the chance to dance and sing and I have the fun of my life. I learned magic in that movie. I was doing my magic trick, but I'm so clumsy that we have to repeat several times. And in the, you say bloopers, the bloopers? Yeah, you can see all my mistakes and it's a fun blooper. <laughs> Them call it. It's funny because reading the, the book first, Cormac McCarthy, and then the script of No Country for Old Men, I didn't get the thing of call it because the literal translation will be llamalo. What does it mean when you say and you say call it? It doesn't make any sense. Even though when I'm when I was shooting it, I knew what it meant, but still I will do it kind of not owning the whole meaning of it. And I guess that helped for the lack of sentiment or emotion into the call it line. There was one day that I went to a gas station near Vegas and the guy looked at me like very scared. <laughs> he said, no, no, I'm only an actor. I'm fine. I don't have any coins in my pocket. I about them Dune character, Stilgar. When I read Dune back when I was 25, the character I loved the most, he was Stilgar. So when Denis Villeneuve called me and said, I have a role for you, and he was explaining me the role, and until the end of the conversation, he said, you know his name? And I said, yes, he's Stilgar, and I can't believe that you're offering me that. It's a, an absolute gift, and it's a dream. It's a dream to be able to work with this amazing cast in such an epic movie directed by Denis Villeneuve, playing a role that you kind of dream with it when you were younger. Thank you. Her no country. Well, the coins brought this picture from a brothel in the 60s in the border with Texas of a guy having a drink with that uh, haircut. And Paul, the hairdresser, did like ch -ch 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 boom and he showed up in 10 minutes in front of me in the mirror. They were laughing their asses off and I was very worried like, shit, really? Do I have to wear this for the next three months? But uh, it was genius. It was genius that such a maniac like Anton Sugar had that haircut. And that's the magic uh, touch of Paul, the hairdresser, but also the coins. They know that there's something very uncomfortable and funny in that. Unscary, spooky. Bond villain, having a chance to work with Daniel, he was, uh, I adore him. He's so funny and such a great colleague and an amazing actor. And Sam Mendes and Barbara Broccoli and the whole team, we had fun. Sam Mendes invited me to the party and he told me, okay, let's built up this character from the ground up. What can we find that has not been done yet in some way? And we were like, okay, we have to make Bond physically uncomfortable. And let's create this character where he's very unreadable. You cannot read him. We thought of him like he had many operations because of the signer and the cyanide. And, and we put some stripes behind the, the hairline. So I was all the time with a face like this. And it was very uncomfortable to be like that the whole day. but. It helped to give a very strange look. Javier Bardem, fun facts. I like painting, I like I like playing rugby. I can't play rugby anymore, but I played rugby for 19 years and I love it. I just was uh, last year in the rugby world championship in Paris. It's uh, one of my passions. Javier Bardem and Julia Roberts movie, If Pray Love. And again, it was one of the first times where I had the chance to work with with such a big star, and uh, and I was very nervous. She was so collaborative, she was so helpful, so generous, so fun to work with, an amazing actress. You you will start doing the scene with Julia, and she will get into the emotional state like in a, like within a second, and you go like, oh fuck, that took me off guard. Uh, okay, and then she will get out of it and she will keep being the nice woman that she is, and then she will come back into it and be in the drama. It was amazing to see that unfolding in front of your eyes. And I was in Bali, which is a, a paradise. <laughs> Javier Bardem, romance movies. I don't have many romance movies. If Pray Love, Vicky Cristina Barcelona, crazy movie. That's it, romance. I, I wish I, I would do more. Would you do a romantic comedy? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, right now. I mean, it has to be good. It has to be good in the sense that it makes sense for me to be there. Otherwise, it would be ridiculous. <laughs> Javier Bardem, rugby. Okay, I talk about it. I play rugby since I was nine years old until I was 25. I played in the national team in Spain and I loved it. It taught me a lot about 
movie making because rugby is a sport where there are 15 players and no one is a star it's not like soccer football where you have amazing stars like messi or ronaldo in rugby there is no such a thing there are great players but you have to play your note you cannot play any symphony and that's what movie making is you are part of a of a team and you have to do your thing no more no less i was taught uh, that by playing rugby for so many years Hey, about them, Little Mermaid. I love Rob Marshall. I know him since a long time ago and I wanted to work with him so badly. And then I texted him saying, I, I heard you're doing Little Mermaid. And if there's a chance that King Triton speaks with a foreign language, I would love to. And he said, I'm shopping in the grocery store. And I was thinking about texting you to ask you if you wanted to do it. And I was like, wow. Then I went to my daughter, which at the time was eight. And I said, I may do The Little Mermaid. And she looked at me almost crying and asked me, are you playing Ariel? I said, no. <laughs> Thank God, no. <laughs> and it's a movie that I'm very proud of and it's a beautiful movie. And, and, and everybody, again, working with Ron Marshall, it's like with Danny Villeneuve, you are in the hands of great people, great human beings doing amazing work. So it's, it's, a, it's a loving experience. Happy about them. Last one. Today. Today I'm promoting Dune Part 2 and you should watch this movie on a big screen because it's a masterpiece. It's everything that you expect for a movie like this and way more. And today I have the luxury and the gift of working with directors like Denis Villeneuve. And it's something that I would have, I would have never dreamed of like years ago. Bye-bye, Google. Happy about them. <laughs> I haven't said my name so many times in a row. That, that's the most Google I've done of myself ever. 